Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I'm going to talk about a blue ocean event. A blue ocean event is when there's no Arctic sea ice left. And we can expect to see this in a few short years, in my view. So I'm going to talk all about this blue ocean event and how I think it will play out in subsequent years. Okay. So in a nutshell, if the first blue ocean event happens in 2022, there'll be no Arctic sea ice for about a month, up to a month, maybe a couple weeks to a month in September. Within a few years, there's no sea ice for three months. Within a few more years, no sea ice for five months. And within a, a decade, I think that we'll have an Arctic Ocean free of sea ice year round. So I'm gonna explain my rationale and I'll get back to this table um, in a few minutes. So this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Please have a look at it. And I don't get any funding for any of these videos um, or any of this work that I do. And I spend a lot of time doing it because I really want to educate the public as to what we're seeing with abrupt climate change. You know, very, very rapid climate change, huge changes in the Arctic, huge physical changes in terms of how much light is reflected because the ice and snow reflect a lot of sunlight. And when there's no Arctic sea ice, it's very dark in the Arctic. A lot of light is absorbed and the ocean will heat up tremendously and it will affect extreme weather events. It will amplify extreme weather events around the world. So please consider uh, making a donation to support my videos and work um, you can just use the PayPal button here. You don't need a PayPal account, just a, uh, a credit card. And I'm setting up uh, Patreon. Uh, people have asked me to do that and I should have done it a long time ago, but better late than never. So I'm working on that. Okay, so let's get right into the gist of this. So if you Google Arctic sea ice graph and have a look, we're very, very near the end of the melt season for 2018. This is the configuration of ice that is left. There's not much and it's very, very thin. This is the Arctic sea ice extent. Um, it's still, it hasn't bottomed out yet. This was what happened in 2012. Uh, here we are in 2018. It hasn't bottomed out yet according to this. We're on September, this is September 18th. This graph was updated. Okay, so we're nearing, we're nearing the bottom, we're nearing the melt, the end of the melt season um, at the moment. And like I said, the ice is extremely thin. Okay, you can see the trends and there's all kinds of real time data on here, which is well worth looking at. Okay, going to the specifics. This is the PO mass or PIO mass daily Arctic ice volume from January through to the end of the year for different years. So what you can see is this is the 1979 to 2001 average. A lot of ice volume would form in the Arctic and then we would reach the minimum. And these curves are all shifting downwards. Okay, so here we are in 2018. Okay, so we've shifted downwards significantly in the volume of the ice in the winter in 2018 compared to all the other years. Okay, but the minimum, um, they're, they're, we're, we're not lower than all of the other years at the minimum. There's a few years that are um, where there was less volume. Now remember, this is based on the instrumentation. Okay, so if the instrumentation has trouble determining how much ice there is when the ice is all fractured and broken up and slushy, then this number could be suspect. 
this number is certainly down, so would I'd probably expect this number to be down lower unless there's other processes coming into play. Okay, so let's keep going. So basically, if we take the the minimums each year and we plot them on a graph, then this is what we get. So this is the minimum Arctic ice volume from 1979, which was when we first had the satellite sensors. Okay, this would be 79 here. Okay, um, to present. And what you can see is there is year to year fluctuation because there is a variation of weather patterns in the Arctic. Uh, the amount of heat being transported in the Arctic um, and things like that. So you can see this fluctuation. This is the data. Now, if you do various fits, if you do an exponential fit, it comes to here. If you do a log fit, it comes down to here. So this is a zero. When is it going to go to zero? If you do a polynomial fit, second order polynomial fit, it comes to here. If there's other processes in play, if there's some feedbacks which slow down this drop as you get lower and lower, you might have what's called a Gompertz fit. And then this is a linear fit, this yellow line. Okay, so these show that the ice, these ones, these fits show the ice vanishing about 2022, 2023 for the first time. These other ones have it hanging on for a few more years. So that's the first big question. When is it going to happen? So if we just look at the exponential fit, we have it coming down to zero, yeah, about 2022, 2023. Um, and these are the ranges. And this is um, what's called the residual. If you take the fit and you take the data from the curve, um, you can see do the subtraction and you can get the difference between the, the black curve and the red curve shown up here. Okay, so basically this would argue, you would argue probably about 2022, 2023, but there is uncertainty. It hasn't, it didn't happen. You know, this would be 2019. This would be about 2030 or something, this line. Okay, the Gompertz fit shows that it's hanging on a bit longer. It shows that if there's a some sort of feedback, you know, and one possible feedback would be, for example, when the ice is recessed so much from the coastlines, there's no export out the Fram Strait, really. It's all melting from the top, melting from the bottom that would reduce the um, amount of ice. So that could maybe slow it down a little bit. And this is a linear fit. You just do a linear fit through here. You get about 2032 or so for the ice loss. Okay, so we don't know. But we do know that the ice is decreasing every month. So this is the years and this is showing the different months. So this curve here, the green curve here is the black curve, is the black data point in all the previous graphs. So this is the key plot. So you can see a drop every single month. We're getting less ice volume in the Arctic. Okay, so now I'll bring back my table and I'll explain the rationale. So look at the different months here. So September. Okay, so if we follow the exponential curve, then the ice vanishes by September in 2022. Okay, so if the ice is gone, it would be gone for, you know, maybe a few weeks or to a month in September. Okay, no sea ice in the Arctic. Now, when does the next curve come down to zero and how far behind is it, are these, is the next curve? So the curve for... This is the curve for August, and this is the curve for October. So two more months. So when do those curves drop to zero? It's within a few years, if you, if you do the look at the numbers. So by 20, if the ice is gone for the sake of argument by 2024, by, by 2022, the blue ocean event, then by 2024, the ice would be gone for August, September, October, three months of the year. When do the next curves cross zero 
add a couple more years and you get November curve and July curve dropping to zero. So say by 2026, there'd be no ice for July, August, September, October, and November. That would be five months of the year. Add a couple more years and you get this blue curve, December, the ice vanishing. So by 2028, no ice for six months of the year. The next two curves are January and June. So say by 2030, add January and June for, to the um, months that are ice-free of the year. And then add February, say after another year or so. And then there's three months left. So the last three months to go, March and May are, are here, and then April lagging. So it looks like probably the last sea ice in the Arctic will be in April of about 2032. So after about basically, so the net result is that after about a year, after about, sorry, a decade, if the, first, if the blue ocean event is in 2022, by 2032, there's no ice year round in the Arctic. And that's just based on the trends that are happening with this um, curve, basically. Okay, so some people think that, well, it's always going to be dark in the Arctic. You know, how is this possible? There'll always be ice in the, in the dark months in the winter. Well, a simple argument against that is even now we're seeing huge excursions of very, very warm air going up into the Arctic. So in the middle of the darkness, um, and cold in the Arctic now. We're often seeing the North Pole going above zero. We're seeing temperatures anomalies of 20, 30, 40 degrees Celsius, warmer than expected, going right up into the Arctic. Also, you know, when there's no sea ice, the oceans will warm so much that it will be very difficult. It'll be very wavy. The water will be churned up. There's a lot of heat. In fact, there's a lot of heat under the sea ice right now. There's, a, there's the ice and then the lens of fresh, cold, fresh water underneath from melting, going down maybe up to about 50 meters even. And then under that, there's very, very warm water with enough heat content to melt um, 0.9 meters, or almost a meter of the ice above. So when all that water is mixing and, and when there's longer and longer durations of open water in the Arctic, one would expect that the heat is would build up a lot and the jet streams will be shifting. As I said, the center of cold will be Greenland. No, it won't be the no North Pole offset a little bit towards Greenland. No sea ice year round. The, the jet streams will be centered on, will, the center rotation of the jet streams will, will be shifting to Greenland, as I mentioned in a previous video. And there's lots of other data um, from Arctic sea ice graphs. There's the um, I was looking at the Whipneus graphs. There's the Pettit graphs that are also very good here. Um, for example, the, the spiral of the, the downward spiral. So if you look at these, the order in which these months happen and how far they're behind September, you can get that data, which I showed from here, also from, from this uh, spiral graph. And this is very interesting because this shows that Although the, the melt, um, this is the yearly ice loss. The yearly ice loss in the summer, uh, well, the yearly ice loss in, this, in the melt season is increasing, but, incre but decreasing even faster is the yearly ice maximum. This is the volume. And I pointed this out um, in the original graph, uh, which is here, you know. This number here is, this is dropping significantly Whereas this one here, here we are here, we're, in the, we're near the bottom, but we're not at the lowest point. Okay, um, if you go to the Arctic Sea Ice Forum, you can go to how soon will the ice go, and you can get other people's views on what's going on. So thank you for listening. Um, in 2022, 